And so began Uncle Wiggily's Adventures by Howard R. Garris. Uncle Wiggily's Adventures, story number one. Uncle Wiggily starts off. Uncle Wiggily Longears, the nice old gentleman rabbit, he hopped out of bed one morning to go to the window to see if the window and the sun were shining. But no sooner had he stepped on the floor than he cried out, Oh! Ouch! Oh dear me, a potato pancake! Oh, I believe I stepped on a tack! And Sammy Littletail, he must have left it there. How careless of him! You see, this was the same Uncle Wiggily of whom I have told you before, and the very same Uncle Wiggily. And he was an uncle to Sammy and Susie Littletail, the rabbit children, and also to Billy and Johnny Bushytail, the squirrel boys, and to Alice and Lulu and Jimmy Wibblewobble, the duck children. Well, when Uncle Wiggily felt that sharp pain, he stood still for a moment and wondered what could have happened. Yes, I'm almost sure it was a tack, he said. I must pick it up so no one else will step on it. And so Uncle Wiggily, he looked on the floor, but there was no tack there, only some crumbs from a sugar cookie that Susie Littletail had been eating the night before. Oh, I know what it was. It must have been my old rheumatism. They gave me the pain, said the old gentleman rabbit as he looked for his red, white, and blue crutch, striped like a barber pole. He found it under his bed, and then he limped to the window, and sure enough, the sun was shining. I'll certainly have to do something about this rheumatism, said Uncle Wiggily, as he carefully shaved himself. I guess I'll see Dr. Possum. And so, after breakfast, when Sammy and Susie had gone to school, Dr. Possum was telephoned for, and he called to see Uncle Wiggily. Ha! Hum! exclaimed the doctor, looking very wise. You have the rheumatism very bad, Mr. Long Ears. Why, I knew that before you came, said the old gentleman rabbit, blinking his eyes. What I want is something to cure it. Ha! Hum! said Dr. Possum, again looking very wise. I think you need a change of air. You must travel about and go on a journey and get out and see strange birds and pick the pretty flowers and don't get don't don't get exercise enough you just don't get exercise enough exercise enough cried uncle wiggily why my goodness me sakes alive in a bunch of lilacs i don't play checkers almost every night with grandfather goosey gander well that is not enough said the doctor you must travel here and there and see things very well said uncle wiggily then I will travel. I'll pack my valise at once and I'll go off and seek my fortune. And maybe on the way I can lose this rheumatism. Well, so the very next day, Uncle Wiggily, he started out with his crutch and his valise that was packed full of clean clothes and something in it to eat. Oh, we are very sorry to have you go, dear uncle, said Susie Littletail. But we hope you'll get back well and strong. Well, thank you, said Uncle Wiggily as he kissed the two rabbit children, and then off the old gentleman bunny he hopped with his rheumatism crutch. Well, he went along for quite a distance, over the hills, and down the road, and through the woods. And as the sun got higher and warmer, his rheumatism felt much, much better. I do believe Dr. Possum was right, said Uncle Wiggily. Traveling is just the thing for me. And he felt so very jolly that he whistled a little tune about a peanut wagon, which roasted lemonade, and bold and frizzled Easter eggs that Mrs. Cluck Cluck laid. Ha! Where are you going? Suddenly asked a voice as Uncle Wiggily finished the tune. Well, I'm going to see my fortune, replied Uncle Wiggily. Who are you, pray? Oh, I'm a friend of yours, said the voice. And Uncle Wiggily, he looked all around, but he could discover no one. But where, where are you? The puzzled old gentleman rabbit he wanted to know. I can't see you. No. And for a very good reason, answered the voice. You see, I have very weak eyes, and if I came out in the sunshine without my smoked glasses on, I might get blind. So I have to hide down in this hollow stump, see. Then put on your glasses and come out where I can see you, invited the old gentleman rabbit. And all the while, he was trying to remember where he had heard that voice before. And at first, he thought it might be Grandfather Goosey Gander. Or Uncle Butter the Goat. Yet it didn't sound like either of them. I have sent my glasses to the store to be fixed, and so I can't wear them and come out.
went on the voice but if you are seeking your fortune I know the very very place where you can find it where asked Uncle Wiggly eagerly right down in this hollow stump was the reply there are all kinds of fortunes here and you may take any kind you like Mr. Long Ears ha that is very nice thought the rabbit I have not had to travel far before finding my fortune I wonder if there is a cure for rheumatism in that stump too so he asked about it of course your rheumatism can be cured in here came the quick answer in fact I guarantee I can cure any disease measles chicken pox covid mumps even a toothache and so if you have any friends you want cured send them over here to me I wish I could find out who you were spoke the rabbit I seem to know your voice but I just can't think of your name said Mr. Uncle Wiggly Long Ears the gentleman rabbit and you'll know me as soon as you see me said the voice just hop on down here in this hollow stump and your fortune is as good as made and your rheumatism will soon be gone and you'll no longer need your red white and blue rheumatism crutch hop right on down here and I'll show you all about it well Mr. Uncle Wiggly he didn't like the looks of the black hole down inside the stump and he peered into it to see what he could see it was so black in there that all he could make out was something like a lump of coal complete blackness like a black hole now what well, Mr. Dr. Possum said I needed to have a change of scene and some adventures said the rabbit and so I guess I'll chance it maybe I'll go on down perhaps in this dark crazy hole I'll find my fortune and then carefully holding his rheumatism crutch and his release Uncle Wiggly he hopped down inside the stump he felt something soft furry and fuzzy pressing close to him and at first he thought he bumped into Dottie or Willie Lambkin but then all of a sudden a harsh voice cried out ha now I have you I was just wishing someone would get, come along with my dinner and you did get in here and see if you can find your fortune Uncle Wiggly you might even be my dinner and with that, a big black bear who had been hiding in the stump pushed Uncle Wiggly into a dark closet and he locked the door. And there, the poor rabbit was and the bear was getting ready to have him for dinner. But don't worry. I'll find a way to get Uncle Wiggly out of this. And in case you have any ice cream pancakes for supper with strawberry jam pudding sauce, I'll tell you in the next story how Uncle Wiggly got out of the bear's den and went fishing. <laughs>